it's me, Pandascoma, and today we're going to be drawing. I don't know if I told you guys, however, I guess you know now. I draw! So, I put the signature over the drawing part of this video because I know I'm going to be posting this in a lot of places. One of them being Amino. And I know that place is notorious for stealing things or drawings. So I wanted to put the signature here just in case. I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. I tried to make it transparent enough so that it doesn't bother you guys. However, just strong enough so that no one can steal the video. Today, we're sketching a lunar moth adoptable inspired from this beautiful moth. I actually had a previous drawing of her, but at the time, I just started making adoptables and now I don't really like it. So I'm actually trying to redesign her in this speed paint, which you might see a little bit later. Now I'm just trying to make the sketch make more sense instead of just a sloppy mess. I think at this moment in time, I didn't know I wanted to redesign her. So I just started sketching out her old design. What I originally had planned was that I was going to make her pose much better and also just draw it much better. I'm just drawing her body shape. Basically, I'm just drawing her naked and using boxes to help me figure out how her torso should be drawn so that I can draw the legs and limbs onto her. I had a bit of trouble with their hands and arms, but now I'm just starting to get greedy with the drawing and started making up some new ideas for her. I knew that by remaking her design, it was going to take much more longer to make the drawing and I'm trying to draw her so that I can make money. I didn't want to waste too much time on something that I didn't know would make me a lot of money. But I decided to go and redesign her anyways because I just wanted to. I wanted her to have a sort of fairy-like image to her, even if she is a moth. It kind of just fits with her image since there's a lot of delicate elements in here. At this point, I was wondering how I was going to make the image to sell her. So as you can see, I started putting in the title and how much it will cost, very poorly by the way. And I decided to add in a larger image of her face so that even if the image was really small, you would be able to see how she looks like, and hopefully get someone who is interested in her design. Now I'm trying to make a sketch that's more comprehensible for me, making sure that I get all the details right. Getting all of the details of the braids was the hardest because I'm trying to figure out which hair is being taken to make the braid, and also make the shape of the braids believable. I also added in some little flowers to her hair, which I thought was fitting to her theme. I also couldn't forget her halo, which she had in her previous design. I think it was one of her things that made her stand out, at least maybe in her other design. I had a lot of trouble with the hand here, but I was trying my best to make it look relaxed but holding up the branchy orb up, even if it's floating. I'm trying to get all the little fingers look like 3D fingers instead of just flat pointy pieces, so that's why you're seeing all the little lines in between the fingers, even if I'm not going to add that into the line art. Now I'm working on the top of the body, moving on to the other hand. However, this one didn't take as long because it was a pose I was more familiar with. However, I still had trouble with it. I wanted to make it as good as I could make it. I think it was because I was a little rusty, but I didn't really like it. But it was good enough. Sometimes, even if you try your hardest, it won't always look good. Anyways, now we're moving on to the legs. At first I thought I was going to be giving her some vine-like boots. I don't know, I was just throwing out some ideas. I also decided to draw the back side of her dress so you could clearly see the little stringy thingies that come off her dress, as inspired by the wings of the lunar moth. Now I'm trying to draw comprehensive vines because before I just slapped it on there, so now I have to make sense of it all. And as I said earlier, I thought I was going to be making some vine-like boots. At the time of making it, I didn't know how I was going to tone out or how I was going to look either, but I was just trying my best. While I was drawing it, I was wondering if I was going to make the boot brown or make the boot green. All I knew is that there were some vines on top of it. <laughs> Anyways, we're just retouching up everything here to make sure everything is neat for when we do the line art. I decided that for the new design, the little circles on her dress is going to be the different faces of the moons. I thought it would be a cute little detail, especially since her whole design is based off the lunar moth. Even though the moth itself isn't actually about space or stars, it might be a good idea to add. I tried retouching up the legs since they looked a bit stiff. I started really questioning what I was doing here, so I had to make the legs into a more blocky shape so I could understand it more and make sure I'm doing a good job on it. <laughs> I tried retouching up on the arm, but when I looked at it from far away to check it, it just looked ugly, so I just undid everything. <laughs> Anyways, we started to do some of the lining on the eyes and the hair, and there was a lot of undoing and redoing involved. I actually had not drawn for a couple weeks prior to this drawing. I was trying to get myself back into drawing with this piece. 
The braids are probably one of the hardest part of the hair because the rest is quite easy for me. But that's when I realized I didn't really concrete the idea of her design. I didn't even know what I was going to do with the boots yet, so we had to go back to do some rough coloring to figure out how she will end up looking. Since the actual Lunar Moth colors is like this, I don't really know how to describe that color. However, we decided to use a very similar color for her palette. I really like that soft green bluish color, so I used it for both her skin and hair. I thought it would make her look pretty unique. Here you get to see how her actual wings are the Lunar Moth wings. And now we're just working on the little details of the design. I really love the idea of the vines because it really adds to her naturey look. Now we're finally working on the boots, the one I've been most afraid of designing. We experimented with some green and brown colors. Even if I didn't know how it was going to actually look, I decided to give it a chance. Since I didn't have enough creative juices for the boots, I ended up working on the rest of the things, which I added a little gradient to a transparent cloak, which gave it a cute little flare of its own. I decided that I also wanted to make a little back view of her dress in case someone had to draw her. Which I know that if I'm going to be buying an adoptable, I would definitely want to draw them. So I thought that whoever would end up buying this, it would help them out a lot. However, I was kind of really lazy when making the back side. I really wanted to focus on just the big front view picture instead, so that's why. Now is the lining part. I had to undo and redo a lot of course. When I was drawing her, I actually hadn't drawn for a few weeks. This is the time I was making all these videos for my YouTube. I stopped drawing so that I could focus on making videos and the worst part, editing them. <laughs> I really wanted to get my Animal Crossing videos out in time for the 2.0 update, but it was really just too much for me since I was just started editing and I didn't really know a lot. So when I was learning her, I was actually a bit rusty. I really like it when I'm on a wall and I'm not questioning, am I doing this right? Because right now, I was really questioning what I was doing and how should I be doing the lines. Like, how did I do it before? Is this good? How does this go? <laughs> and things like that. I mentioned before that doing the braids was the hardest part of the hair, before I got rudely interrupted by designing. But I actually really like doing long wavy hair since that's just what I personally prefer. Hence why my avatar looks like that. And that I also kind of look like that in real life. Minus the purple eyes. And the clothes. I wish I had cool clothes like that. Nowadays though, my hair has actually grown out longer and all the purple has faded, but I so badly want to get most of it chopped off and add the purple back into my hair. It gets so difficult to do things when your hair keeps getting in your way. I always have to keep pushing it back. But other than that, I know there are some people who don't like to do long wavy hair and that's understandable. God damn, it's a lot. It's actually really difficult for me to do men's hair, because I unintentionally make it look girly. I think it's because I accidentally pull the hair lower than it should be, so I have to consciously make the effort to make it a lot more shorter than what I'm used to drawing. Because of that, when I was drawing my boyfriend's hair, I drew it so good the first time, but I couldn't get away every time I tried to draw it again. So what I did, I actually just imported the picture to all of his drawings and traced over it. I guess this is an example of work smarter, not harder. But I still want to get better on drawing men's hair. However, I'm not going to actively pursue that. I know one day we both want to actually show our faces, but that's when we actually get a camera. But I really do like how my avatar looks, and I kind of want to keep it. So maybe I might do a video of me making a VTuber model with you guys? I have no experience in that, but I think because of that it's going to be more fun to do as either a stream or a video probably a video. Maybe what I can do is switch off between using my face and using my VTuber model. I know for streams, I could have it as a redeemable thing to make me either switch off to camera or my VTuber model. I know I saw someone do that, but it was really random how I saw them, so I don't really know who it is now. But I think it would be really fun to do both, since I actually really like VTuber models, especially since I just love drawings in general. When the models are really good, I just tend to stare at them, not in a creepy sort of way, <laughs> but in a way where I just appreciate all the details and shading put into the models. I especially liked Kreji Ali's model. It was very unique and the way they brushed on the shading looked so fun. Although I don't watch her as much as I do all of the other Ian girls. When I'm looking at their models though, I try to figure out how they could have possibly made it move like that. But it's hard to contemplate that right now since I don't even know what programs they use or how it works in the first place. All I really know about it is that they use some sort of meshy transform thingy, if you know what I'm talking about. 
Anyways, as you can see here, I'm getting to the flat colors of the drawing. I don't know if you guys can see it, but when there's almost nothing happening, it's usually me filling in all the small holes in the flat color. Since my line art is actually kind of transparent too, I'm also fixing the outlines of the color to fit inside the lines better so it doesn't look so wonky. It's probably really hard to see all the small details because I'm also having a hard time seeing it as well. It's okay, at least it's a speed paint so we both don't have to sit through all the boring stuff. When I use the paint bucket, it usually does 99% of the job, but I do have to fix like the 1% of it. It's a little tedious to have your line out kind of transparent on top of your flat colors, but I think it makes the drawing look super good, so that's why I do it. I just really like to give it my all in a drawing, because why would you have a drawing that doesn't look good, you know? I just like making pretty looking drawings, that's all. <laughs> Since I retouched up a lot on her design, it's gotten a lot more complicated. Because of that, doing all the flat colors is so difficult. It took me a lot longer to do the flat colors for this piece than I originally thought. I have to keep referencing back to her sketch underneath so I don't miss any of the details. I've done that before. <laughs> Anyways, since I didn't line the orb, I'm doing that now. I actually didn't really know what I was going to do with the orb at first. I was originally thinking we were going to go for a more lineless look for the orb, but in order to keep it cohesive with the character, I decided I should give it some lines. Now we can go ahead and give it some flat colors. Later on, we're going to give it a more glowy look, but I don't know how we're going to shade it since 90% of the orb is glowing. And you know how we were going to give the back view of the character? I didn't add the wings to it because it would only get in the way. However, I just realized you can't really see most of the wings because of her hair, so I'm drawing a reference of how her wings look like now. Also, since, as I said, I was lazy making the reference of the back of the dress, it didn't really turn out that good. I decided to redo it so I can understand what's going on better, and probably make a better pose for it. Since remaking it, I really liked how it toned out, because the last one had a very awkward pose. Although, it was difficult to get the hands right. I spent some time struggling since I don't normally draw hands at this kind of angle. So because of that, I decided to just make it have a very relaxed pose with not so much detail. Let's just say that it was because it was so tiny. <laughs> Anyways, we finally got over the hand and now we're working on the rest of the tiny little reference. I've been really liking the look of a thicker line art on the outside and a thinner line art on the inside. I don't know if you can see it, but that's some of what I'm doing and I think it adds to the drawing, even if it's subtle. Anyways, now we're moving on to the tiny little flat colors. I'm also doing the same thing here, where we're fixing up the spots the paint bucket didn't manage to get and etc. Usually this sort of thing happens with any sort of sharp corner, and the paint bucket just doesn't manage to get that tiny part. I want to be able to transparent this later, and if you don't get the tiny little holes it ends up looking a little weird. Finally, we're moving on to the shading. Usually, shading is the most fun thing to do, but when you have a lot of extra little details, it almost gets as taxing as the line art. It takes so long to make it look right, and there's so much to shading that you have to do if you want to make a drawing look good. Even if it looks like I got most of the shading done, I actually just slapped it on as a reference for me. Now I'm going to go back and clean it up a little more. I wanted to make the hair look round and fluffy like I saw in a drawing before, so I added some shade on the top of her head. Normally, I don't do this kind of thing, so it was really fun to experiment with it. I'm hoping that maybe I can keep it up for the other drawings I do in the future, if I remember. <laughs> because there are so many parts to the hair, there's so many places we have to shade. And since it's hair, I'm also trying to express the little strands, so that's even more details we have to do. As you can see, I'm literally combing through all of her hair, and I'm undoing and redoing parts in her hair so that it looks better. Whenever something just doesn't look right in the hair, I usually just like to erase it. Sometimes it gets difficult to fix something that's already on the paper rather than just restarting over. This is especially true if you're having a really hard time with a drawing in a hole. Sometimes it's best to just start fresh and try again. However, it can't hurt to save the other try you did, just in case the new drawing doesn't end up as good. We finally moved from shading her hair to shading the rest of her. I'm also trying to shade anything that is floating above something else, like for example, the hair above the arm. Now we're just fixing the shading on the hand, holding the orb, down to fixing the shading on the legs and make it a bit more shapely since it was so sloppily drawn on. I decided to fix up the shading on the arm so that it makes it look more rounder, hopefully. <laughs> And even though I have a little bit of a hard time with it, I tried shading the breasts and the dress. That kind of rhymes. <laughs> now we're getting into the part of shading where we basically duplicate our shading layer. Right now the shading looks kind of harsh, but we're going to be fixing that later. 
at least right now I'll be able to see what I'm changing on the shading. On this duplicated layer, I'm going to be erasing basically only the outline of the shadow. This creates a softer transition to the shading. So there will be a lot of very subtle changes to the drawing. I really like shading this way because it's a much more easier way for me to create that softer transition for the shadows. How I did it before is that I did it all on one layer, which looking back on that was pretty stupid. <laughs> but after this, we're going to be working on fixing the colors of the shade so it's a bit more softer. We made the first shadow brighter and a lot more lighter, while the second layer that we duplicated is going to be creating a lot of the shading effect as you can see. Now unlike the first shading, there's still a lot more steps to do, however they won't take as much time, I believe. At least that's the way I end up with it, unless it takes up the same amount of time and I just don't know it. <laughs> but what we're working on, or going to work on, is the highlights, reflective lights, and a little bit of a lighter shade. Right now, we're working on the reflective light, which I think really makes the drawing look more 3D if you know what I mean. And just like how we added a bit more shade, we're going to add a bit more highlights that is softer than the frost. Whenever I do the highlights, it's easier for me to tell where to put the shades sometimes. But I usually just put the shading frost most of the time. I don't know what made me do it like this at first, I think I forgot to add the shades. It has been a while since I last drew, so I needed to remember all of the little things I added to my drawings. This is just one of them. One of my favorite things to do while shading is also adding a bit of blue to the things that are further back from the character. For example, the wings and the legs as you can see here. I think this also adds a bit of depth. And it's actually overly exaggerated, but I love it so much when people do this. I did take a bit of a break from this drawing because I did have to sleep. But before I went to sleep, I wanted to export the drawing to show it off to my boyfriend and how it's going so far. When I got back up in the morning, I fixed some of the shading before moving on to the other things. We started to work on the shading of the details on top of her. Like for example, the vines, the transparent cloth, the flowers, and the halo. I think this was the part I dreaded the most because I already got the character done. It was super difficult for me because I really wanted to be done with this drawing. <laughs> But I pushed through so that I could have my drawing completed, and hopefully people will like it. I've never really shaded vines before, but I tried my best with it anyways. I hope it doesn't show too much that I didn't really know what I was doing with it. <laughs> I kind of just shaded it with the same technique as I did with the person. I think I could get away with that because the way the vine shades work are almost the same as a person or their clothing. As for shading metal, it's completely different. That's why I'm saving that one for last, and hopefully I do that one well too. Because I know that sometimes, when there's a bit of depth to metal, it's easier for my brain to understand how to shade it. But when it's flat like the crescent moon on her chest, it's difficult for me to figure out exactly how to shade it. Maybe it's because I really like the reflective light, so when there's no depth, I'm like, where do I put the reflective light? <laughs> Anyways, moving on from that, we finally added the light coming off the halo, which makes it look super pretty now. I also decided that I didn't really put that much effort into shading the cloth on top of her, especially the little white laces at the bottom of her dress. So as you can see here, I'm working on the shading on her clothing all over again. It was a bit of a bother, but I wanted to make this drawing as good as I can make it, even if it pains me to do so, sometimes. Like now. <laughs> We're adding all the highlights, reflective lights, and etc. even to the little laces on the bottom. Right now, I'm mainly focusing on the laces and adding the lighter shading to all of it. Doing this was actually very tedious to do, and trying to figure out where to shade it and where to not. But after that, we're finally moving on from the character and making the backgrounds. As you'll see here in a second, I'm going to be doing a very simple background and adding the title so people know she's an adoptable. And just in case people miss it, there's the prices right on top of the picture so they won't ask me. <laughs> Anyways, I really like how this toned out. Especially looking back at it, I really love how the wings are fitting into the background. I hope you guys like it too. As soon as I post this video, I'm also going to be posting it up to be adopted so you guys can get a chance too. It's going to be up on all of my social medias down below. And with that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.